There had never been an African-American in the Indianapolis 500. Now, Willie T. had been there in 1985. Uh, he took an attempt at rookie orientation program, but that hadn't worked out. So now it's six years later and he's back. He's driving for Derek Walker, brand new team. Uh, they were running V6 Buicks and they had all kinds of trouble. They kept blowing engines. It looks like we have a blown engine. Yeah, it looks like Willie T. Ribs has lost another engine as he comes into the pits. What kind of luck this guy has had. So it's the final day, he's not in the show, and it really looked like it wasn't gonna happen. Uh, he, he'd get stuck at like 2.07, and then during the afternoon, the 2.13s, 2.14s, 2.15s started to come, and at 5.15, under threatening skies, he went out to make a qualifying run, field was full, Tom Snee was on the bubble, and Willie takes the green, Willie T takes the green. So, I mean, could, was he even gonna last four laps? Because he hadn't been. And the checkered flag is up for Willie T. Ribs. Uh, he takes the checkered, crowd went crazy. And uh, when, he, uh, when Willie T. Um, came in after the cool off lap, I remember him coming down the pit lane, engine shut off very slowly, and somehow or other he'd hoisted himself out of the cockpit like he was running a, in a soapbox derby car. And he's waving with both hands and he was high-fiving the crew members as he was rolling down the pit lane. And I remember looking at the crowd up and, up and down the stands and everybody was going nuts. Well, you know, sometimes you have to get to the next day to realize it. But, you know, I realize that everything went good. I, what I do realize is that my team worked really hard and Buick never gave up. They kept helping us when we were, when we were sunk. I mean, we were underwater and we got resurrected, so, uh, you know, it, it, we all, it came to an end, and I'm really pleased about that. It was a truly historic moment. First African-American in the Indianapolis 500.